Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday over here in the Atlantic. The main and only item of interest remains to be Tropical Storm Emily here now centered south of the Dominican Republic. And if we zoom in on this here, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news in terms of its organization is that it has a low level center. A well-defined center. The bad news is that we can actually see it, meaning that it's not covered in thunderstorms, and it's now what we call a naked swirl moving out westward from under the convection with all the thunderstorms now east and southeast of it. And although it is well-defined, it is now naked and moving off to the west here. This system has been firing deep convection for the last 60 hours straight, but it has been off to the east of the low-level center this entire time. And the shear, ha the shear and dry air, the dry air in the atmosphere to the northwest of the storm has been limiting thunderstorm activity here and there's been a little bit of shearing as well from the north and this has finally overcome the center and pushed it all the way out from under the convection to the point where we can see this low level swirl moving west or slightly north of west and that's the other thing here is its movement it's moving west or slightly north of west here we were expecting it the current NHC track takes it up here and my track Yesterday was also for this to come into the Dominican Republic. My track yesterday was for this to come up like this and then on out like this. Right now, it looks like it may actually miss the Dominican Republic. It may try to catch this tip right here, but the way it's moving, the fact that it's weaker than it was forecasted to be, and now that the low level center is fully, utterly decoupling with the mid level part of the storm back here, this may try to come farther west than forecast, and we may see it try to curve up near Haiti instead. It's going to be an uncertain thing to figure out when this is actually going to try to curve north, but it should move eventually. Let's go over the track, fe track theory again here. This is the up water vapor loop showing the eastern United States and the western Atlantic. Here's that upper trough that came off the eastern United States and formed the weakness north of the Bahamas between the central Atlantic Ridge and the big Texas Ridge over the southern U.S., a little bit east of Texas right now, but it's over the south, and there's this break in between the ridges that should allow Emily to try to come north of the Caribbean between them. And this little tail of the trough is hanging back here and will end up splitting off and retrograding westward over the Gulf of Mexico. And and keep this weakness open for a little while, which should try to bring Emily north. And then once again, as this trough leaves out to the northeast over here, this Atlantic Ridge will be trying to build in more to the northeast of Emily, which should bend the track slightly west-northwest towards Florida and the northern Bahamas before eventually a weakness will set up in here that will eventually try to steer it back out sharply to the northeast and the reason there should be a weakness here is that we're going to have this big south ridge over the southern US sitting in here and then we're going to have the Atlantic Ridge building in from the east there is going to naturally be still a weakness set up in here even once this trough is gone between the two ridges they may be trying to bridge at this point but there will be a weak point like the weakest link in the chain over Florida or east of Florida just by a little bit in here which should induce the storm to turn and recurve right out which is why we see the models trying to avoid this area and again we have a west-northwest jet in general over eastern North America, which means that when this does try to recurve, it's going to be a very sharp recurve out. And even if this were to move over southeast Florida, it would be very hard to hit North Carolina here. And although some of the models do take it fairly close and the southeastern states should watch this, it's going to be very hard to hit anywhere but Florida with this pattern. And the sharp recurve should take it on out east of North Carolina. Now, if we look at the steering layer for the low levels of the atmosphere, which is appropriate for the naked swirl the, that we are now seeing, here's that trough leaving. The break in the ridge is still right here between the southern U.S. ridge and the Atlantic ridge out here. So the break is over the central Bahamas, which means that this really can't move west for too much awful longer. It's going to have to make its turn eventually here, and it should eventually start to curve up, potentially over Haiti now. It's going to be a guessing game to see when this actually tries to make its turn, because now it's a lot weaker than forecast and it's going to be tough to see where this actually does try to turn but it should eventually move north and it will eventually move into this weakness and get north of the Caribbean. Now I'm going to show you guys the ensemble's 
from last night zero z out of the uk met because these i really liked this this showed the track that i had yesterday if we look at the center point of these tracks this is exactly the track i had over the central dominican republic making a slight bend west northwestward as the ridge builds into the northeast of the storm taking a pass within 200 miles of florida and then curving out to the northeast this is exactly the track that i had yesterday now if we look at what's going on now of course we have a storm that's not coming into the central dominican republic it's trying to move a little bit farther west than that so if we take some of these further west ensemble members notice what happens if it moves a little bit farther west it curves like this and then moves over southeast florida before it makes its curve out over here now this makes sense because very slight changes in the track early on can make large differences down the road and namely if we have a storm trying to move a hundred miles farther west in here you're gonna make it move farther west by 100 to 200 miles and if it was 100 to 200 miles off the coast here with this track then if it's 100 miles farther west it's going to be 100 to 200 miles farther west here and potentially make a landfall in Florida before moving out. I still like this general track idea. The big question right now will be when the storm actually makes its curve north so that we can try to figure out how far west it's actually going to get. Right now I still like the general idea that it comes north of Haiti here. Probably going to try to avoid the tip of the Dominican Republic here but it should eventually curve north in here and make that turn into the northern Bahamas and it should get pretty close to Florida on its way out here. Probably closer than I had it yesterday due to the fact that it's trying to move farther west as a surface center. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the intensity of this once it comes across Hispaniola. The big question right now is whether it will actually survive Hispaniola. First of all, we have to get it over these mountains because again, this center right here is fully decoupled from the mid-level feature and it's a surface feature that exists below 10,000 feet in the atmosphere. These mountains are nearly 10,000 feet tall and wind does not move through mountains, it moves above them, which means that once this moves over the mountains, it literally will cease to exist in here. If it has to move over the mountains, this surface circulation will literally vanish, or nearly so, which means that it will be fully up to this mid-level part of the storm to move across and then regenerate the surface circulation on the other side. The question is whether it can do that, because this is not very strong, it's not coupled. If we don't have a deep circulation that is very strong when it moves over this island, it has the potential to be completely destroyed and not be able to regenerate on the other side. That said, both possibilities are on the table here. We'll have to see how it looks on the other side. It could regenerate and it could die entirely, but right now we're going to assume that it tries to regenerate on the other side, which it likely will try to given enough time here. Now, this is the vorticity map at 200 millibars, showing us the areas of spin in the uppermost part of the atmosphere, basically showing us the axes of the troughs that are in play. The orange and yellow colors show us the axes of the troughs. This one here is the elongated trough north of the Caribbean, which has been shearing Emily down here, which we can see on the water vapor imagery. This elongated trough in the upper atmosphere has been shearing Emily, and then this trough right here west of Bermuda is the one that is forming the weakness over the Bahamas that should curve Emily North which we can see right here on the satellite imagery. So what these are doing is this is the tail end of the trough if we look at the satellite this tail end of the trough is getting left behind as the base of this trough is now leaving leaving this tail piece behind which will eventually split off and what this is doing is this is starting to merge with the western end of the other trough north of the Caribbean and these will merge together and start retrograding westward eventually Eventually what that will allow Emily to do is her upper upper ridge, upper anticyclone over her will be able to expand into the gap between the feature over here and the troughiness over the central Atlantic and through that gap the ridge will be able to expand forming an area of more relaxed winds aloft and less wind shear as these troughs start to move out of the way. Now if we look at the GFS forecast for hour 60, there's still going to be some issues here for Emily to deal with. If This is 60 hours, which means that Emily should be somewhere near the northern Bahamas or southeast Florida by this time. We have the trough that is lifted out, and we have the upper level feature that's split off from the tail and is retrograding over the Gulf of Mexico. So we can see that the ridge is starting to balloon up between these two. The issue that we have here is we have an upper high over the southeastern U.S., over the Carolinas, and 
And these ridges, again, around the southeast flank, we have these winds out of the east and northeast around the ridge in here. And this is going to bring subsidence, which means sinking air off the southeast US coast, which means that southeast of this ridge, we're going to have a band of very dry air sitting up in here that is going to be trying, trying to get wrapped in and entrained into Emily as she is sitting over the northern Bahamas. Eventually, this ridge will merge and assimilate with this ridge in here, and they will get integrated and allow the upper environment to become a more symmetric upper level high over Emily as she is curving out this way if she is over the water. However, until that point, she's going to be dealing with some dry air in here that tries to get entrained, and although wind shear will be relaxed in here, that's going to be an issue that will probably impede her regeneration over this area. So in general, we have a system that is very weak, still a moderate tropical storm, 50 miles per hour in strength, but it is now weaker than it was forecasted to be upon moving into Hispaniola, and we have the surface center popping out on the western side, which means it's going to try to come farther west than forecast with the track, may have more of a chance of impacting Florida now on its way out, but it's going to be close and it can't be guaranteed. We also will have to see where the center tries to relocate once the storm is forced to regenerate after crossing the mountains of Hispaniola and possibly even eastern Cuba, depending on how far west the center tries to get today. Eventually this will come up and we'll get close. The Bahamas and southeast Florida are the most likely land areas to have to deal with this before it curves out to sea and probably is not a threat to very many others. Perhaps Bermuda if it curves out fast enough, but likely more in between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda on the way out. So these folks in here should be watching this. The folks in here should be watching for heavy rains and potentially deadly floods as the mid-level part of this comes over with the convection as folks are known to have a lot of issues in these areas, especially Haiti, when rains come from even weak tropical disturbances moving over the area. So the track a little bit more uncertain than yesterday, given that we don't know how far this center will get. But the general idea and theory remains the same. And it should get pretty close to Florida on the way out. Likely won't be all that strong, given the issues it will have to deal with with the tongue of dry air up here as it tries to regenerate. But we will have to see how it looks on the other side of Hispaniola before we have a solid idea on what the intensity will be in this area. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.